A new law in Florida will restrict or ban children from social media. Supporters say it gives them much needed protection, but it is opposed by tech corporations and free speech and privacy advocates. So what are the arguments for and against? And what's the rest of the world doing? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Nick Clark. So, new legislation passed in Florida will bar all children aged under 14 from social media, while under 16s will need their parents' approval. Republican Governor Ron DeSantis has enacted the law a federal judge in another state struck down amid concerns over curbs on freedom of speech. Information today has never been so freely available, transforming what we can find out at our fingertips. And it's now in our pockets, too, with smartphones and also in the hands of children. Social media is now part of everyday life for many, but studies show it can negatively affect people's mental health, particularly for the young and vulnerable. And there's a risk of exposure to violent and pornographic material, too, when it's not blocked by social media platforms. But opponents of restrictions say laws like the one in Florida are interference by big government, an erosion of freedom of speech and a denial of educational information for children. It's a debate that's intensifying worldwide, not just in the United States, and we'll be adding to it with our guests in just a few moments. But first, this report from Ume Kulsum Shuri. In Florida, children like these aged under 14 can no longer hold social media accounts. And even to access them, they'll need their parents' permission. The bill signed into a law by the state's Republican governor is one of the most restrictive social media bans for minors in the United States. Now, with things like social media and all this, you, know, you can have a, a kid in the house, safe seemingly, and then you have predators that can get right in there uh, into your own home. You could be doing everything right, but they know how to get and manipulate uh, these different platforms. And so uh, it's created huge problems. Similar laws in other states are being challenged under the U.S. Constitution. Opponents say they restrict rights to free speech. International research has found the mental health of youths is being put at risk by their unlimited exposure to social media. Parents, children's advocates and political figures say companies are putting profits first and are not doing enough to protect children. In 2021, internal documents revealed by a whistleblower at Facebook that showed the negative effects on youths were discussed in the U.S. Congress. The suicide rate for 10 to 14-year-olds has doubled. For young girls, it has quadrupled. Instagram didn't create this crisis. But from the documents provided by the whistleblower, clearly Facebook's own researchers described Instagram itself as a, quote, perfect storm. I want to be clear that this research is not a bombshell. It's not causal research. It's, in fact, just well, directional research to differ research with that we use Davis. for product changes. Uh, this, this research is a bombshell. It is powerful, gripping, riveting evidence. With the number of minors using social media rising, concerns are growing that they are at increasing risk of committing suicide, eating disorders, and are being targeted by sexual predators and cyber bullies. Tech giants are promising to do more to make their applications safe for children. We also support setting industry standards on age-appropriate content and limiting signals for advertising to teens, to age and location, and not behavior. At the end of the day, we want everyone who uses our services to have safe and positive experiences. The new law in Florida is being debated in other states and countries, and the tech industry is expected to mount legal challenges. Umikulsum Sharif, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. So what is the wider picture beyond Florida? Let's go to our guests now in Edinburgh. Hannah Hotel is the founder of Delay Smartphones, a campaign to protect children from the dangers of smartphones. In Mumbai, in India, Narali Abhatia is a cyber psychologist and founder of an anti-cyber bullying campaign. 
And in Dublin, we have Nolene Blackwell, who's the online safety coordinator of the Irish charity Children's Rights Alliance. Uh, greetings, everybody. Good to have you with us for this important discussion. Uh, I'd like to start with you, Hannah, in Edinburgh, if we can. Uh, you feel so strongly about this. You set up your own organisation advocating to delay giving children smartphones until at least 17. Why did you do that? Um, so just to clarify, it's delaying smartphones until at least the age of 14 and social media for 16. So I set this up because um, I'm a therapist myself and I saw a huge um, change in the kind of things that clients were coming to me for um, in terms of the levels of social anxiety, particularly with girls. And normally it came back to what they were doing was, you know, spending lots of time on social media apps. Um, and it was clearly having a big impact on their mental health. Um, I have young children myself as well, and I think that all of us can agree when we just walk around now and see how much young children um, and teenagers are just on their phones, even when they're together. Um, this was just not the kind of world that I wanted my own children to grow up in. And so I realized that we had to do something at the community level, working together. If I delay in one city and someone else does it in another city, it's almost impossible to commit to delaying. But if we can do it together as our communities, but also um, nationally, then um, it can really have a, 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 main, a big difference because we know social pressure is one of the main reasons why parents are giving their kids smartphones and social media. Right, and, and Hannah, how popular has it become? How quickly has it grown? Well, yeah, I think we can see there's been a huge um, movement growing across the UK where lots more parents are becoming aware now of the dangers of smartphones and social media. Um, and people are realising that if we stand together, you know, as parents, we actually have a lot of power. There are lots of organisations coming together um, to really um, work on this issue. All right, uh, let's go to Nirali in uh, Mumbai in India. You're a cyber psychologist and there's compelling evidence, isn't there, that the rise of uh, smartphones and social media don't just coincide with the collapse of uh, child mental health. Many say they're the cause of it. Yes, absolutely. There's enough evidence by now, enough research that is showing that how uh, the time spent on screen is impacting how we are behaving, how we are making decisions, overall lifestyle, not just emotional and mental, even the physical health is suffering. Of course, a young child is not really prepared. You know, I always use an analogy that uh, giving a smartphone enabled with social media accounts also on that is like handing a car and key with a diesel in it and not educating the child on the road safety, neither the driving lessons are provided. You've just asked them that go explore. So it is bound to create mishaps. It is bound to create uh, that kind of, uh, you know, problems. It will come without education. So definitely, I am very much in agreement with we serving. During the pandemic, we did not have really enough uh, choice of, you know, handling because the education was also online. But now it is time that we can look at, you know, revoking that kind of uh, need that why does a very, very young child, which is under age of 14, require an access to social media. So that's the question that we are also picking up out mm. loud at our end of the world as well. OK, uh, Nolene, we'll come to what you think of the ban itself in a moment. But first, as an expert in children's yeah. online safety, it's right to say that the, the graph line, Nolene, for suicides, for depression, for anxiety in children soared just when social media has captured, if you will, our children's attention. Yes, and Absolutely. undoubtedly, Absolutely. all around the world, people are so worried about this. And it has to be um, part of the problem, certainly has to be uh, children's access to uh, social media such as it is right now. Basically, though, I, we come at it in a slightly different way in the Children's Rights Alliance, and actually throughout Europe they're coming at it in a slightly different way as well, rather than banning or, or saying it doesn't exist, rather than uh, restricting children's rights to the good things about social media, friendship, learning, all of the things we know that they can do, recognising that the harm happens because of the product that is delivered to us by the social media companies, recognising 
realizing that the social media companies and many other companies on, on the internet in this digital age are making fantastic profits, enormous profits, by keeping children and other vulnerable adults as well more and more online. And really where we, where we would like to look and see is why are we allowing a faulty product which has developed over the past 20 years to continue and why when we see the faults that are in it and we can see them in the way it's produced why aren't we addressing those faults why are we punishing children um, now that's not to say uh, what Hannah was saying about uh, restricting the type of instrument that children access that media on may, may, may make total sense along the way similarly similarly not denying the abuse that happens through cyberbullying that Nirali was speaking about but in some ways it's looking at it in a different way recognizing children do have rights do have rights to access the best of social media and then just working out how do we make the product safe for them. OK, because I'm going to come to our other guests safe. in a second to, to allow them to have their view of what you just said. But I just want to just put this to you, Nolene. So at a recent speech in the House of Lords, uh, the US Surgeon General, Vivek Murphy, who was speaking there, told parliamentarians that if social media was a pharmaceutical drug, it would be withdrawn, we'd be withdrawn for safety reasons. Yes. And that would it make you think that it's not the, the companies that are uh, creating social media that, are, that need to organise it, it needs to be government legislation. Yeah, and, and uh, again, that's why throughout Europe, for instance, and in Ireland as well, but throughout Europe, regulation is the biggest show in town right now. Uh, there's a lot of recognition very late in the day uh, that companies need to be regulated. Um, they, we would not agree with, with the level at which the companies think they need to be regulated, which is very likely. We would say regulation, much more regulation is needed, much more standard, uh, child-friendly, rights-friendly legislation. But undoubtedly, it has to be regulated. We are not going to make this go away. We are not going to keep our children safe by banning them from it. What children will get workarounds around it. Uh, they will make their own decisions around what they're looking at. And if we ban it or if we try to restrict it, we really run a risk that children who are vulnerable, who are abused, are the ones who are going to be afraid to report it even more than they are right now, afraid to disclose it to their parents, and their parents will be afraid that they failed. Where, in fact, it's the people who make it, the way they make it, the way they make it addictive is a big part of the problem. Hannah, what's your view on that? Yeah, so I think I understand what Nolene's saying about, you know, um, for vulnerable kids, you know, that they're going to be less um, likely to want to come forward. But we have a huge conflict of interest with the, the tech companies. So we have, um, they have created an extremely addictive um, apps, you know, for children, and they want to keep children on these apps for as long as they possibly can. Every minute longer that they're on the apps, they, they can make more profit. So it's not in their interest to want to get to, to protect children. Um, and we also have to look at what are all the things that children are not doing when they're spending their lives on social media. So we've gone in just over a decade from a play-based childhood to a phone-based childhood. And so although we can say, oh, no matter what, you know, they'll get work around. Yes, that's one of the main issues we have with parental controls at the moment. Parents will say, I've set up parental controls. It's fine. They don't have access to this. But it is very easy for them to get around um, these things. So I think that a ban would be something that would be um, really welcomed. Um, I think that it would help parents a lot and it would make it a lot easier um, what children are being um, exposed to is, you know, absolutely horrific. And I think that one thing we have to remember is that that we can have the same app, the same same social media platform. We can have very different experiences depending on our age. So what you and I might see on Facebook compared to a ten year old girl will be a very very different experience. And so we often are looking at it through our own eyes, unless we are actually you know looking at what our children are seeing on these apps. You know, constantly monitoring that every single day, which very few parents have the bandwidth for that, and it's very complex to be able to set up those parental controls, um, then, yes, no, I, I think that a ban is the only way to go here. And Nirali, what about in India? What efforts are being made there? Are any efforts to, to get the tech companies to get their act together? 
Yes, absolutely. Our government is, you know, coming up with the regulations, coming up with India-specific policies that big giants have to have to follow. However, it is not enough. We are a very, very young nation, meaning we have a large young population which is using these products day in, day out, and they're really getting sucked into this world. Indian upbringing is very different. It's very social. We believe in a lot of physical interaction, and that's the first effect that we are seeing of this uh, social media. So ironically, it's called social, but it is eventually isolating. And loneliness, growing anxiety and depression has been on massive rise in our country. And that is also a reason that, you know, organizations like mine have to exist. So I'm also very much in favor of that. Yes, we need to welcome the ban because this has to be collected. See, it's not only children using or it's not only the content that they are exposed to, but it's also uh, another angle where parents are also encouraging their children because it is a monetizing platform. We have so many young talents who have been, you know, uh, encouraged by their parents who have lost their childhood in becoming a social media star and really earning good money at this age. Yes, it's a good thing as well as it is not appropriate if it is not done in a collective measure. And that is why I'm also in favor of ban because if it is imposed collectively all of us will have to follow the same if we give that freedom over here then we are looking at what had happened earlier with uh, you know pubgs and with tiktoks where the ban comes in but then there is a backdoor entry and children are still over there and different segments of people are still over there so i think if collectively we go ahead we are catering to our future of our nation we need healthy, emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, healthy population. And this at corrective age, at the right age, if we bring this measure, it will go a long way. And honestly, we also haven't identified the actual need for under 14. Besides education right now, why do they require social media? If we have one good reason, we can still continue. During the pandemic, this was the way of interacting, socializing. Okay. Peer connections, it was important along education. But so now the, we need to relook at it. Okay, Nolia, I just want to come back to you and, and to your point about you know putting the impetus on, onto the, the emphasis onto the tech companies to do something about this. Um, because as Hannah's just said, the fact is that they, it's not in their interest to do anything. So that's why legislation is needed, or at least that's why the ban is needed. If we look at what we're talking about here, we are talking about a product that has developed over the past 20 or 30 years, where we really have allowed companies to grow into mega corporations with huge profits and with almost no supervision of what they were doing. Inevitably, those companies are going to put their commercial interests first. This is true of a whole lot of other areas. It's true of cars. It's true of financial products. And, the, and over time, all of these have had to be regulated. They have had to, they have been obliged to take the public interest into account, to take the rights of children into account, and to take the rights not to harm people into account. They will not do it of their own accord or they won't do it sufficiently of their own accord. This is where our leaders cannot let them off the hook by saying we will stop people using the products and we'll put all the um, responsibility on the users and where they're young users on their parents. We have to, and our, our legislators around the world have to take on these enormous commercial interests and say, you could do it much better. It's the simplest things. You, you should not be able to auto-scroll forever. It, that should not be possible on, mm -hmm. on a, a social media panel. It is. That could be fixed in a moment, but it does not make commercial sense. So somebody has to tell the, these companies to make their products safe. They are currently selling unsafe products and only regulation will sort it out. Yes, there's a lot to be learned in media literacy. There's a lot we can do about trying to form better habits for our people and our children. But ultimately, if they are not 
if they are not sanctioned, if they are not stopped at the level of legislation and, re and regulation, not only will children find their way around it, the big commercial companies will also find ways around whatever it is, and they will not be stopped from doing the harm that currently we see. Right. Uh, Hannah, if the onus is put onto the social media companies, what is it that they need to do? So the social media companies, they need to um, have use external age verification apps. I think it should be under 16 for social media um, so that they have to prove the, their age before they're able to use it. And then if they if children are found to be using it, then they can be fined and sued. So I think that um, this is definitely possible. And I think that when we ask, if there's been many studies of asking older children saying, you know, would you prefer if there was no social media and Throughout all of these studies, children have said yes, as long as no one else had it either. Um, so they just don't, there's this social pressure where children don't want to be left out, but they realize this is something that's not positive for them. They realize that they're missing out on life. And we have now the first generation of children who were g given social media before they hit high school. Um, and we now know that for every year younger, they were given a smartphone by their parents, the worse their mental health is today. So we have this collective action problem. I think that we need absolutely regulation of big tech, but we also need government legislation, and we also need a collective mindset shift of parents and of society at large. And I think that's why in the first instance, it's delay smartphones until at least the age of 14. Use an alternative device. There are so many great alternatives that can do everything that we want to be able to do, to be able to connect with our children. Um, and that keeps them safe at least as much as possible in that first instance. Right. Uh, this is a question to all of you, really. But first, we'll start with Nirali. Uh, there are those who would say, precious few parents, I would think, but there are those who would say uh, that a ban is just the nanny state speaking. Nirali, what do you think about that? So, you know, as uh, recent, I mean, just now Hannah also mentioned that it is, it has to be a collective effort. Yes, it will start with the ban, but if there is a way where we can really arm twist these old tech giants to make sure that they align their intent, because right now, if we have to see, yes, they, they can change their algorithms, they can change whatever they want at their end, and the only missing element is intent. So if we start with a ban, things will follow up, and collectively, we all can get over there to make sure that uh, all of us are aligned to the safety measures that are required. Hannah, uh, before I come back to you, Nolene, Hannah, I just want to ask you this. Uh, Parents have a responsibility too, don't they? Because should they not weed themselves off staring at their, their phones the whole time and looking at Instagram and Facebook, which is setting a pretty bad example for their children? Absolutely, yeah. I think healthy phone habits is something that, you know, we all need to work on, be more intentional with that for sure. Um, I think the difference is, is that when we got smartphones, our frontal lobe was fully formed. We had the maturity to be able to deal with them. We still find them super addictive. So right. if you give them to right. very young children, it's just almost they've got no hope against that trillion dollar industry, the attention economy. Uh, so, Nolene, is it not for parents, uh, not for national law, it's for parents to legislate in the home? So, so parents will... Most parents try to do their best all the time anyway, but we have to accept that parents don't come in a sort of one shape or form any more than children do. Um, and we have to accept that some parents um, don't know uh, and enough to help um, and won't be able to do it. Other parents will be absent. Um, children will hide from their parents. Parents, some parents have enough to do to manage their own day and their own time, you know, and, and, and barely cope. So there's a wide range of parenting available. And while parental controls and parental help and parental conversations. All of these are things that we need to work on to help people have better conversations within their own families about their own habits as well as the habits of their children. But nonetheless, we cannot make parents uh, bear the responsibility or the shame or the feeling that they're inadequate because they're not able to manage uh, the controls uh, properly. And it is yet 
again taking the focus of the person producing the product, putting the product onto our table and saying, parents, you have to make sure the child doesn't consume that, uh, that addictive product across the way. So look, it's part of a solution that we all know more about it, that there's better literacy, but it isn't an answer to stopping children from harm, nor should parents be tasked with that responsibility. OK, uh, Nirali, a question of the future. Yeah. It's the early days of all of this, isn't it? We're all finding our way, okay. both parent and child, and trying to figure out how to uh, deal with the slightly terrifying world, social, world of social media that we find ourselves in. But, uh, Nirali, if we spin forward, uh, say, 10 years, do you think things will be in place, that things will be very different then, that we'll have figured it out and, and worked out how to deal with this and, and to take on the might and the financial might of the, the big tech companies who have, as you've all said, this responsibility? Uh, I want to be very optimistic and hopeful, and hence we are talking the, over here today. We are very serious about that. We need to raise our voices now. Ten years down the line, if we want a healthy generation, and with all uh, the tech advancements, we have to make sure that we align it to the right intent uh, in terms of exposure, in terms of safety, all of this. So along with education, awareness, Technology is never bad. It's the purpose or the intent for which we use it makes it good or bad. So for that, we need education and awareness at all fronts, the user as well as the producer. If we align this, if we have enough regulation, if we have good controls, legislations in place, and I think we can have a great future ahead with this advanced technology and make it absolutely uh, normal to use it okay. without any harm. Hannah, so same, same question to you. Forward. Thanks, you thanks, Nirali. Sorry, just went. We're wrapping up the program now. So, Hannah, just want to throw that question to you. How do you feel about the future? It's it's a very difficult time right now for everybody. What do you think is going to be happening in the next five to ten years? Yes, well, we're going to see huge changes with AI and virtual reality, and that's exactly why we have to get a grip on this now to protect children. I think that um, the tech companies are not going to mark their own homework. We need to be the ones to put regulation, um, force them to regulate themselves. We need the laws and we need parents and schools to all come together um, on this. All right. Great discussion. Uh, so much more to be said, but we've run out of time. Thanks so much, uh, Hannah Ortel, Narali Bhatia, and Nolene Blackwell. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. And thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can catch up with the programme at any time by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, just go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Nick Clark, and the whole team here, it's goodbye for now.